Good evening everyone. This is our first session of Bible School and today we are going to be looking at topic 357. Uh, the Kingdom of God's Perspective regarding peace so as we come online as i check out people coming online i just want to give up this time to the lord and invite the holy spirit spirit of god we invite you today come and have your way come and lead us come and guide us come and go ahead of us but come and teach us come and give us revelation in this as we study your word and as we dwell on your word in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen and amen it's awesome to see everyone there so I just want to say good evening, Bible school students. As I always say, it is so awesome to learn and to dwell and spend time in the Word of God. As we are going to be looking at the perspective, uh, God's perspective regarding peace, this is a very, I think it's one of those topics that are awesome. Because for me, when I look at this topic here, it is one of the key fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you read the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, peace is among the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So even as we are going to be learning about peace, I want to start saying that peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and you can only get this and the peace we are not talking about is not the one that the world calls the word peace or any other peace that is out there. The peace we are talking about is the peace of God. And the only way to get this kind of peace is when you yield to the Holy Spirit. Only when you yield to the Holy Spirit can you bring forth this fruit of peace. I want to say that the world needs this peace. Every place around us needs this kind of peace. But I want to say to you as a child of God, there has to be an intentional way of dwelling and giving yourself into the Holy Spirit so that he can work in you and bring out the juice or the fruit, which is eventually going to be peace. How are the people around us going to know that we are children of God? The word of God blessed are the peacemakers. And the word of God said in Matthew, says in Matthew, because those are the sons of God. How amazing is that? When the word looks at us, they are going to differentiate us by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When they see us, they must see God. The Bible says the peacemakers are the sons of God. Not the people who say Abba Father are the sons of God, but the Bible makes it very clear. They are actually the sons of God. So you and I must look different and our character must be different. And that one of those elements of our character being different must come with peace. Of course, there are other fruits of the Holy Spirit. But today we are going to be talking about the God kind of peace. Now, as we talk about the God kind of peace, we are looking at God's kingdom and it is a kingdom of peace. When you read Romans chapter 14 and verses 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, as referred by the word of God, is the Prince of Peace. How amazing is that? Jesus Christ himself is referred to as the Prince of Peace. Now, when you read Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. The government will be upon his soldier. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting father the prince of peace this is the one that we look up to this is the one we walk up to and i want to say to us as children of god if jesus christ is the prince of peace and the first thing we did was to give our lives to jesus christ we ought to bring the same character that jesus christ carries jesus christ is the peace of of of, of peace the Prince of Peace, and I believe we have to be a replica of that peace in our workplaces, in our homes, in our families, in our communities. We must be people 
of peace and that is something that for me i find as importantly key now the peace we are talking about must and i always say that when we talk about the fruits of the holy spirit the fruits of the holy spirit are known for us to you know kind of to eat like a fruit if you are the tree bearing the fruit <laughs> you don't eat the fruit the fruits of the holy spirit is for someone else and I also believe that when we dwell and we allow ourselves, the Holy Spirit, to work in us in this area of peace, as we are talking about Jesus Christ being the Prince of Peace, and we are his followers, who we also ought to have this principle, character of peace coming out of us. We also have to go further than that. We have to enter atmospheres, and the atmospheres we enter in must be atmospheres that we bring in peace. This is something I pray for, for my home. I speak it, but I am also intentional about it as a parent, as a wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> as a neighbor, I'm intentional about it. I'm intentional not to, to, to give away my peace. I'm intentional not to be quick to lose my peace. So the atmosphere I walk in, that is what I always say. The atmosphere, if I enter an atmosphere that is disturbed, I want to enter that atmosphere and I want to bring peace. I want to be that when I sit in that atmosphere, there is a peace that is unexplainable that comes into that atmosphere. Child of God, that is the spirit of God. Okay. Before I speak that I'm a child of God, I am a Christian. Child of God who is watching me. Do you, does the atmosphere that you move in, the atmosphere that you go into, those atmospheres that you find that are uh, confusing, atmospheres where there's a lot of stress and strain, even at work, when you walk into that atmosphere, do they feel a peace? The words that come out of your mouth, are they words of a peacemaker? Okay? A peacekeeper? Or the words of someone who is coming to even disturb the small peace that is left behind it is something that for me i see is very key and it's something that when i speak in my home i speak peace every single day i declare and i say my home will be a home of peace that anyone who will walk in this atmosphere they will not just know that we are christians but they will feel a peace that is unexplainable I speak it and I say my marriage will also be a marriage of peace. When someone looks at us, they must see something supernatural around us that is so peaceful. It's the same thing I speak even in the atmosphere as, uh, as I go in. I go into places. But this is something very important in our communities. Are we people who usher in peace? in our communities when we enter a place that is disturbed do we bring in the atmosphere of peace so peace must move from just knowing that you have peace in your heart to actually extending it to the atmosphere in which you are in to start telling people when the words you speak must be words that bring peace and that don't bring trauma. So when we look at this, we can see that our God is actually a God of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace as named. Our God is the God of peace. The Hebrew word is Shalom. Now, and I know so many people, I have so many friends who when you send them any message, the first thing they said you, Shalom. And it is something else. It is something amazing. I always go like, wow, someone is greeting you with Shalom on, on WhatsApp and <laughs> in their email. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So this person has taken this piece further. But uh, the children of Israel use this word so much. They should, the Jews, even until today, they use this word. Shalom represents the God of peace. And you as a child of God must guard your heart and your mind. Now, when we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Now, this is a promise that our Father has given us, that this peace must guard our hearts and it must also take over our minds through Jesus Christ. But remember, child of God, as the promise has been given to you, you have to be intentional and take authority of that promise. And you know what? Make sure you do not allow your heart to be disturbed and your heart to be troubled. This is what the word of God says. When God says that we must guard our heart 
and our mind, when you read it here, he's talking about the peace of God. We must not lose our peace. And I want to say again, something that we are going to be learning today and more regarding peace. Child of God, do not give away your peace for anything. Do not allow any situation to take away your peace. When you lose your peace as a child of God, you have just opened your spiritual house to such a door that the enemy is going to come in. You are supposed to guard your heart. And remember, the Holy Spirit sits into in our hearts. The moment you don't guard your heart and the Bible says, guard your mind with this peace. Do not allow any situation, however disturbing it might be, to take away your peace. And for me, daily when I get those situations and I know I'm talking about situations and you might be going like, you don't know what I'm going through right now. Regardless of what life will bring your way, the first prayer for you to pray is, Lord, I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. It is the best gift or it is the best thing you can have in the midst of trouble. Whether it is sorrow, whether it is loss, whether it is the most disturbing situation you find yourself in, the first thing you should guard against is your peace. No one or no situation must take away your peace as a child of God. Your peace is the presence of the Holy Spirit. I remember, and I can evidently say this, I remember when I went through um, one of the hardest times of my life. <laughs> it was one of the hardest times of my life. And um, at this particular time, um, I had lost, I was I had just um, been confirmed that I'm, I've lost my baby. So I was uh, six months um, pregnant, or should I say expecting? I don't know how we can make them to be weeks, but they were six months. <laughs> I count months and I find people counting weeks, but it was six months and I was pregnant. And um, uh, the doctor tells me, the news that I was not, we had prayed. And I want to say, child of God, everyone was praying. Everyone prayed for us like you don't want to know. But <clears throat> when we got to the doctor, the doctor gives me the, the news that I've lost. I've lost him and I've just lost our son. And the first thing that went into my mind at that time was the enemy telling me, where was God in all this? And the second thing was, you are evil. You sinned. You did something wrong. And that is why this happened to you. Just in a few minutes, the enemy was penetrating with so many voices. I'm talking about seconds. In a few seconds, all the voices were blaming, blame God, blame yourself, blame that. And I immediately stopped. And as the doctor was looking at me, I think the doctor was just thinking, what is going on in her mind? I started to speak and I said, peace, Lord, your peace. And I spoke that same peace to my husband. And I spoke that same peace uh, to my daughter. And she was very young. But I spoke peace. And I want to say to you, child of God, I just knew that my heart was protected. It was not an easy time. There were so many events that led to that day. So I knew it was going to be hectic. It was going to be hard that day. Because to come to that day, there were so many events that had happened. But I want to say to you, the people who came to visit me at the hospital, my family members, the church members, my friends, when they came to visit me in the hospital, they, they, they came so devastated thinking I'm going to be, I don't know, <laughs> torn in pieces. Yes, I was sad that I've lost uh, our son but I had this peace and when they looked at me they said but why are you okay <laughs> and I said to them I don't know what I can say but I have the peace of God and that peace of God carried me carried me when the questions came back carried me when I couldn't find an answer why this happened carried me when I believed that I had completely believed the Lord why did this all happen but that peace 
carried me. And you know something so amazing about peace? That when you have this peace, even in the hardest times of your life, you are not, remember it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, something so amazing about the fruit of the Holy Spirit that I said earlier, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit witnesses and glorifies God. The people who were around me who were non-believers, and those are my family members, they were able to see this God that carried me through such a time. And one of the pointers that even today I am not ashamed to say that when my mom gave her life to Christ, one of the areas that touched her was that time of loss when she saw me, how peaceful I was. And how I had just this inner peace and I was encouraging them. They thought I would say, where is God? But I was just telling them, God is good. God cares about us. And even when they came to my bed, I am praying. <laughs> I'm telling them, before you go, let's pray. Now, these guys are not Christians. <laughs> but here I am saying, let's pray. And one of the areas that my mom tells me that um, she gave her life to Christ, her journey started that time. It started those years. That season when I lost my son, she watched me because it was a couple of months of bleeding. It was the longest <laughs> journey of faith we had. And she watched me and they, they did everything to ask me to go to maybe um, to seek a, a spiritual someone on the other side of the world. And I stood my faith and I said, I am not going to go to anyone. God is ultimately God because they wanted me to try the other side which is witchcraft and all that for someone I don't know to cleanse me or something was happening to me but you know what is amazing peace can carry you and peace will give you the best testimony possible the best testimony it is glorifying to God even when we go through those hard times when we go through the times of suffering and trial that we make sure that we guard our hearts we guard our minds. Child of God, even in that time, allow yourself, I'm not saying don't grieve, allow yourself to grieve, but guard your heart, guard your mind, because that is the time the enemy comes in, and that is when he tears you apart. That is the time that he tears you apart. That is the time that the enemy is going to creep in with all his lies. That is why the Bible says that you must guard your heart, and you must also guard your mind in this time as you are going through whatever season that you are going through. Do not fear or be troubled. And we can see this in John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave to you. And this is just, you know, to just confirm what I've just said. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. These are two things that uh, John is telling us. And this is Jesus telling his disciples, which is, is telling you, them and I, and you who is watching me. Two things that he talks about. Jesus says, do not be troubled and do not be afraid. So the antidotes, the antidotes for fear and the antidotes for anxiety is peace, child of God. The antidote for those two is peace. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you peace, regardless of what comes your way. He says, do not be afraid, regardless of what faces you. Do not be afraid and do not be troubled, but have his peace. Jesus says, I leave you with my peace. Here on earth, uh, we can also expect and enter into this place of peace. Now, if you're watching me and you're saying, you know what, we can only enter this place of peace, maybe after, you know, when we go to heaven. <laughs> okay, I have news for you. You can have this peace today. And you can enter this place of peace that you can even transcend or transcend to a place of rest. You can have so much peace that you can enter into a place of rest. It is for you today, not just for heaven. Now, how do we attain or get this peace? Practical steps. Number one, rejoice, child of God. 
Rejoice while you are going through whatever situation that you are going through. If it means rejoice by singing a worship song, by singing a praise song, rejoice, child of God. I always like to say also another way in which you can rejoice is to meditate on the testimonies of what God has done in your life. It is a way of praising and rejoicing um, before the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice rejoice in the lord that is one way in which you can walk in this peace right now on earth number two do not be anxious when you become anxious lift what is making you anxious before jesus put it at the feet of christ philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god do not be anxious let me tell you something anxiety will not take you anywhere except it is going to work so badly on your heart on your mind on your soul and i assure you it is a disturbing thing to even your spirit do not be anxious when you become anxious try your level best to pray. Try your level best to say, Jesus, I give it to you. Jesus, I lay it before you. And he says here in prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Number three, pray and submit your supplication. I've just talked about that. Pray and then submit your supplication before the Lord as you communicate to him and remember child of God, release it to him. We have this habit whereby we are saying I've, I've prayed. Okay, I've, I've, I've given it to Jesus, but we always pick it up. <laughs> we pick it up again and we carry it again. We pick it up and Jesus is standing there saying, I remember there was a season <laughs> and it was just a season. I think it was a season last year and I was really believing God for something big. According to me, it was big. It might not be big <laughs> to you, but it was something big. And according to my own, own knowledge and understanding, it, it was huge. So every time I prayed, over this and you know what i'm still believing god for it but every time i prayed i finished praying and i'm like jesus i've give it to you i give it to you i give it to you because at one time i became anxious over it with my husband so i said i give it to you lord we give it to you but after i've said that a few minutes after that i am still actually thinking about that thing and i'm still talking about it and i am still going on and on and on with my own lips saying i wonder how this is gonna happen <laughs> and I remember we were driving one day last year and I was just worshiping in the car and I just, it was a worship song talking about faith, have faith in God, leave it to God at his feet. And then as I finished worshiping, I heard the whole spirit say to me, okay, so you are leaving, that on, leaving it at by my feet, then act like it. <laughs> I laughed out so loud because it was something that was so direct to me. I just had the Holy Spirit say it. You are leaving it at my feet. Leave it at my feet and act like it. <laughs> Stop saying you have faith in me, but you're still getting that thing and you are still carrying it. And you are still taking control of that thing. But at the same time, you are saying, God, have your way. Come and help me. And for me, I believe that it is very key when we say we pray. And we give supply, supplications and we leave it at the feet of Christ. Leave it there. Child of God, leave it there. And it is okay for you to remind him. But when you start worrying, you have not left it as his feet. Leave that thing at the feet of Christ. And that is a big challenge, but it's doable. Give thanks to God. Be someone who can testify, who can always Give thanks to God. It is going to help you to have this inner peace. Another point, think on these things. The Bible actually goes ahead and says we must meditate on these things. The Bible goes ahead and says these important things that I'm going to read about in the word of God, we ought to meditate about, not the things that are making us anxious. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, meditate 
on these things. Surprise. <laughs> Is it a surprise? The word of God says these are the things we ought to meditate on. These are the things we ought to think about. These are the things that we ought to, to now and then go back and think about. Not the things that cause anxiety. Not the things that cause us to be afraid or to be worried. The more we meditate on something, the more it becomes real and the more the enemy makes it so huge and so big. And it's so important as a child of God, as the word says, that you obey the word of God. Those are the things we ought to meditate on. Set your mind on the things that are high above. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your mind on things above and not on things on this earth. This for me has been a key in my life. And I know even as you are watching me, a lot of you that are watching me can testify about this. Let me tell you something. You will never have it all. On this earth, you will never have it all. You will never have enough of anything. You might have the best house. You might even get a hundred houses, but you will still need more. You can never have it all. Like you, you can you 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 can say, you know what? I will travel the nations. I will, and even after that, your physical human being still wants more. You can say you you can say when I get this kind of money, I would have peace. <laughs> I want to say to you, child of God, there is something about earthly things. If you set your mind on the things that are earthly, you can never have enough. If you set, remember, if you set your mind on the things that are earthly, these things that are earthly are always telling you there is more. There is more. There is more. You can even have more houses. You can even, and the enemy is always around you and, and the world around us is always advertising. It is always advertising. Now it is so important to understand that you as a child of God have to set your mind on things above. Remind yourself that I am just a stranger here. I am passing by. I am a visitor. And we can see Abraham saying, I am a sojourner. I'm just passing through this earth. And learn to have a spirit of contentment and look at things above. It does not mean that you shouldn't desire for God to use you, for God to prosper you. But remember to set your mind on things that are above that is where our home is and that is where our inheritance is going to be you know what when you do that you will find a lot of peace around you and you will be content with what god is doing and if you are in your waiting time you are also going to be content because there is peace that you have set your mind on things that are above so as believers or citizens of the kingdom of god we ought to also be peacemakers it is so important uh, when you read Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. We ought to love people. We must be peacemakers. We must not be in atmospheres that enter places and leave places with so much strife. We have not been called to live strife. As children of God, when we find people in, in an environment of strife, when we find people fighting or we find any situation around us, it might be just you entering into a shopping mall and there is some commotion. As children of God, we are called to be peacemakers. We don't instigate anger. We don't instigate evil. We enter in those situations and we bring peace. So as a child of God, and this is what I always say to my son when he asks me some <laughs> awkward questions, as I believe parents who are here, you know what I'm talking about. I always ask him and I always ask him the question back and I say, what would Jesus have done? What would the Prince of Peace have done in that situation? There is no need to keep grudges, you know, because you are a peacemaker and you are someone who is a replica of a Prince of Peace. You choose to forgive people. Even though it looks like it's the worst situation and you wanted to win. You know what? Maybe you are actually not the one in wrong. The other person is the one in wrong. You know what? It is important to calm down, humble yourself and tell yourself, I am a peacemaker. Okay? 
I am a peacemaker. When I enter into atmospheres in relationship, I am a peacemaker. Let me put down my pride and swallow my pride and just say, I am so sorry. Even, you remember what I've said? Even though you are not wrong, for the peace, just say you are sorry. For peace, forgive people. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. You know, as I'm talking about this, I just feel in my spirit, the Holy Spirit is just directing me to someone or to a, a couple of you who are watching me, and there's a bit of strife that is going on in your family. There's a, a bit of this unity that is happening in your family, and you know what? You feel like you are right. You feel like you, 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 you have the right to be mad. You feel like you have the right to have behaved the way you have behaved. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying that I should say to you that you are a peacemaker. That remember you are a peacemaker. Apologize for your part. Even though at one time that it is not you who instigated what happened. But I feel the Holy Spirit is saying, turn around. Contact your family members and apologize for the sake of peace. And this is what I hear the Holy Spirit saying again. And this is what I feel in my heart. That as you do that, the Spirit of God is going to touch your family. And the Spirit of God is going to bring glory to the name of our Father. As you do that, as you humble yourself and however, and it's a hard situation that I'm talking about. The situation I'm talking about is messy. That has happened in this family but i hear the lord saying that just humble yourself and apologize to the family and for that sake god is going to be glorified you have been praying that god would save your family but i feel in my spirit god is saying you are the key to that prayer forgive your family reach out with your hand to your family and go the extra mile, and you are going to see how God is going to be glorified. You are the key to your family. At the end of this age, the Bible said Satan as, and his influence will also be removed. So the person who contends against our peace, which is Satan, will be removed. Satan, and, and we can see this Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to verse 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of a dragon, that serpent of all, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years are finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Now remember, at the end of this age, we are going to see Satan is going to be removed. And we know Satan is the cause of the disunity we see, is the cause of the pain, is the cause of the anxiety and so many things that we see. After that, the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire. We will experience peace in eternity. So peace is just not going to be experienced here on earth, but we are also going to experience this peace when we go to the Lord in eternity. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of the fire, brimstone, and where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Can God's people this is the question we want to leave you as a Bible school student right now. Can God's people live in God's peace in this world today? This is a question that we have tried to answer today. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, God's people can live right now in peace, even in the world today. Remember, we have been doing this series about the kingdom of God. And remember, the scriptures that we have been saying to you is you are the kingdom. The kingdom is in you. So I've just paraphrased it. The kingdom is in you. If you can still remember. As we are talking about this, we are saying you are not waiting for the kingdom to come. The kingdom is in you. And I want to say to you, you are walking around with the kingdom of God inside you. And one of the keys for the kingdom of God is peace. Let us be 
people of peace. Let us be people that can leave areas with peace. The kingdom of God is about peace and that peace is already available to believers. So we do not have to wait until we are one day in heaven. Peace is available for you. Father, we want to thank you. And Lord, I want to take this time. I want to pray for peace. I want to pray for that person right now who has anxiety, who feels afraid right now. Lord, I want to speak peace in the homes of the people who are watching me right now. I want to speak peace over those homes, mighty Father. I want to speak peace over their marriages, mighty Lord. I want to speak peace over their children. Mighty Father, you say in your word that, Father, you will teach our children and great shall be your peace upon our children mighty father it's your promise and your covenant that our children will dwell in your peace so father we take that promise and we declare peace over our children of oh god our children will be children of peace not only in our homes but everywhere they go mighty king of glory i declare right now your peace in the hearts of your children, mighty Father, the one who is disturbed right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that we lay it right down before you. We come against the spirit of anxiety, the attack from the enemy. We cast it out of their lives in the name of Jesus. Any tormenting spirit that is tormenting their minds, that is tormenting their spirits right now, we cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we declare the entrance of the peace of God in the lives of the children of God. And Father, we declare right now, your overwhelming spirit of peace enters your children of God over their minds and over their hearts. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I just feel there is a couple of you who are watching me here and you are struggling to sleep. It is not something that has been happening for so long, but you have been struggling to sleep. As I was praying, I just saw uh, just a spirit of torment. Just as I was praying, I just felt like there was a spirit of torment for that person who is struggling to sleep. And I want to say to you, guard your heart. There is such a peace that has entered you as I was praying and even as I was teaching. And I pray to you, guard it. Do not allow the enemy to take your peace from your mind and your heart guard it and the evidence that you are going to know is tonight you are going to sleep so peacefully you will not even believe it and i believe that person here has even been trying to take some sleeping pills but i feel the lord has delivered you and there's such a peace that has taken over in your heart and in your mind bless you guys